They're constantly monitored by facial recognition cameras that are able to instantly put a face to a name. Now the Chinese are also ranked, given a mark out of a possible 950 points. A score in the 700s is considered good, around the 500 mark is not. For now, the number is a sort of bank credit rating, keeping track of everyone's spending habits. I think being ranked is a good thing. A society has to have rules. It forces us to be well behaved. It may seem scary, but it's just like that here. We're used to it, and anyway, we don't have a choice. But in an effort to keep all of its subjects in line, Beijing is taking the system a step further in 2020. It's aggregating data gathered by banks, private companies and the state to rate if someone's a good or bad citizen. By using the most data possible, the so-called big data, the system will play an important role in rebuilding a moral society. The state will go over every detail of a person's life with a fine-tooth comb. A financial situation, spending habits, career, even behaviour on social media. Criticising the government online or displaying outward signs of wealth is a no-no. On the other hand, raising the party or giving blood increases your social credit. Xiao Wen Wang is a model citizen. She lives in Nanjing, a testing ground for social ranking. Married with a child, she has a job in a retirement home, no debts, and she wouldn't dream of jaywalking. As a good citizen, I respect the rules of the road. If I didn't, I'd lose points on my social credit. In theory, everything can be taken into account in the social score, even the most innocuous errands like supermarket shopping. When Xiao Wen Wang makes an electronic payment, her purchases tell the state a lot about her. Buying cigarettes would count against her. On the other hand, nappies show she's an attentive mother. Beer could indicate alcoholism. She'd be better off buying water. In this pilot city of 8 million people, there are only 18,000 model citizens. For Xiao Wen Wang, there are perks to be had, such as paying half price for the bus. I get discounts for all public services, even at museums. And the library is free for me, thanks to my school. A good school brings benefits, but people with low scores lose rights. The cinema names and shames people considered untrustworthy, plastering their details, even their addresses, across big screens. It's a matter of principle. Those people have to be condemned. Those people aren't honest, so they have to pay the price. It's only right to pay your debts. You have to blacklist those that don't. The Supreme Court has created a blacklist for so-called bad citizens, those whose ratings have dropped to zero. On it are companies, but also 23 million people to date. Among them is this journalist Liu Hu. He got a little too close to uncovering corruption among high-profile party members. After being sued for defamation by the subject of a story he'd written, he was blacklisted. But he only realized when he tried to buy a train ticket and was told he was banned from traveling. That tells me I'm still on the blacklist. Punished because he's been branded untrustworthy by the state. Mm. Once you're blacklisted, you can no longer get a bank loan, start a business, buy an apartment, or even send your children to a private school. Yu Hu is among a tiny minority of people who have dared to criticize the system, which some are calling a digital dictatorship. I worry, because I think many people like me will be deprived of individual freedoms, and all of us will live with restrictions of one kind or another. After our meeting, Yu Hu learned that his name had been removed from the blacklist, but he still has a long way to go if he doesn't want to languish at the bottom of the social credit hierarchy.